Hello and welcome back to Illustrator. Let's draw a couple of squares, shall we? Uh, and let's just check we remember how to do selections. So I say we've got this whole area selected. Now if we go to align, you can see we're currently aligned. Uh, let's do align to selection. Do a top and then we can do bottom. So essentially this, this box, it will align to the selection. So every time I press the top, it's going to do that. But there's another way to do it, of course, which is going to be aligned to the key object. So if we make this the key object, and now we do align to bottom, you can see that box is then going to move up. And if we make this the key object and do align to top, that box is going to move up. So different ways to align things. Uh, in case anyone remembered, I uh, forgot that. Uh, you can also click this, by the way, if you want to set the fill color to something different. Let's set this one to this. And let's actually not do the same one. And we'll do, yeah, that's fine. All right. So now what I want to talk about is the eyedropper tool. So to do the eyedropper tool, and it's like most things in Illustrator, essentially what you want to do is you want to have the object selected. This is the target object, right? So this is the, this could be like the object, the subject of the conversation is this darker blue. Click on it and it will turn that one blue. So that's the way to look at it. That's the way to like highlight things. This is something which, I don't know if it affects you, but sometimes it's like you have to think of it's like the order of operations, like the order in which you're going to say a sentence, you know. So that, that's kind of like an important thing. All right, now we want to go to swatches. So swatches are pretty cool, right? So with swatches, if you, if you click on fill here, right, you can see this is what you normally get. Uh, and you can see like you can generally you want to make sure this button says show all swatches sometimes they won't all show like this and you can see you've got a few extra folders got grays and brights if you wanted to add a few more in uh, these are the color themes by the way which are really cool um, but yeah if you we're not going to do that we're not going to add those ones in but if you wanted to add some of the ones that actually come with the program they're in this section here and so for instance say we go for art history say we wanted uh, impressionism right and we can take a look at which ones we want. So what do we have here? Just various different numbered Impressionism ones. Uh, let's see which one I'd prefer. I would probably go with, I'd probably go with this one. And you see when I click it, all four of those boxes, they've got a, a white border around them. Now you see when I go here, you can see it's now here, right? Now I can do that to that. All right, so that's pretty cool, right? Um, now, but say we wanted to have something new as well. Let's do a new one instead of this. Uh, and this is going to be like, I would just, this, unfortunately that box is still going to stay open. But so yeah, let's just make a new color anyway. So this is going to be, I don't know, morph. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of it. It probably won't be morph, but we're going to call it morph anyway. And you can make a, you know, you can choose whatever color you want. Uh, let's actually try and make it morph. Is that morph? Might be. Uh, okay, now so you'll see that that morph has been added. And you can actually move it up to there because it doesn't really belong in uh, this section here. But anyway, so I think I actually overwrote it by mistake, but it doesn't really matter um, because this is all local anyway. If we go back to Impressionism 8, if you go back to Impressionism, let's have a look. Uh, you can see Impressionism 8 still has got this one. So it's not gonna it's not gonna cause any problems if you do that. Um, but you should really do a new one instead of what I just did there. But anyway, so there it is, right? Uh, and what you can do, for instance, is say you have a bunch of other shapes. So we we'll go polygon tool, we'll do a three. Get a couple more. And we'll just uh, change these color to red. Uh, one of the things that's important to realize, uh, and it isn't necessarily that obvious, not to me anyway, is say you've got this circle here. I'm going to press down shift, I'm going to hold down shift and then that and that. It looks like the circle's inside the box, but it's actually not. And you'll be able to find that out, but if you do fill, and we do this color we just made, this swatch, you'll see that it didn't actually change the color of the circle. Um, so even if it's inside the box, it's not always necessary. It isn't actually, doesn't have to be 
this might be really obvious, I guess, to people that are really good at art and stuff, but it might not be obvious. So you never know. Uh, all right. Let's get rid of this guy. And let's look at you. So what's going on with this thing? Um, so we can make this a bit bigger. Uh, we've got this the free transform tool as well. It's got this free distort thing, which is kind of cool. Uh, so basically, if you click, so yeah, so with the free distort tool, this is actually something that literally got out added today. Which, so that's why I'm going to check it out this one. It was always in that some of the other ones were in there before. I don't know if you do constraint on it, what that will do. Um, basically, when you go over to this point, um, ah, there's the constraint. So it only constrains it on the actual vertex there. You see that top vertex? That's the only real point is constraining it. So you are able to get some pretty nice uh, distortions with it. And yeah, that's a distort tool anyway. But that wasn't really what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about is something which is really quite cool. And this to do with the text tool. Like if I wanted to now put the text tool, if you go to the text tool here, you see, you see how it changes like that? It actually creates text in the box, right? Um, so that's kind of interesting. So we're going to make the uh, the stroke way bigger. Um, now, if you wanted to change where the stroke actually is, you see how like that stroke is right in the middle? I can change it there. Now this now you can see this one is what? The stroke is inside. And then the stroke is outside. So you can see that the bot the bounding box changes, right, depending on where the stroke is. So that's kind of like an interesting thing. Um we're gonna leave it on the center actually for now. I will do I'm gonna go back to that in a minute. Um it's actually a really nice colour, by the way. Uh um that is what it is, uh if anyone's interested. <laughs> You can see I can actually type on the outside of the triangle like that. All right, let's do a line segment here. So we'll do a line segment. So you can see there's our red line segment. What we can actually do with this is click on this button. You can actually do arrows on it. So you could do like a double-headed arrow, for instance. Uh, and it's relevant to how big the uh, the stroke is, right? And you can also do a dashed line. And if you made that like four, you could do it like that. So you've got various different options for arrows, even like some weird stuff like this, which is kind of cool. You can swap them around. Another th cool thing you can do, go to the curvature one. Make a curved line. Uh, and, th and then the arrows will actually uh, stick to it the way you might want, right? So that's kind of like an interesting way of doing things. So. This would look different at different scales, right? Now we make this stroke a bit bigger. I'm changing the stroke slightly. Kind of gives you a subtle effect, depending on this number, of course. So you can do a lot of interesting stuff like that. So yeah, so for instance, say we selected this shape here. Press recolor. Uh, is that all the shapes? Oh yeah, I guess we've only got red. So you can see that Impressionism 8 has appeared there. Now this is like a really uh, powerful menu and different, you can do a lot of different stuff with this menu. Um, so just to show you this, if you look at the uh, thing in the background, randomly change the saturation and brightness you can see that blue is changing um, so there's the there's that color so that you can see 
purple, the blue, and the red. It's going to show you where each of the colors is. Now that purple is not really there though. You can also do an interesting thing here, which is if you want to change the colors around, um, you can essentially constrain them to to link harmony colors. So what happens when I do this? See, all the colors are changing, and they're changing relative to each other. That's an important thing, right? And you can also look at the color wheel. The other, another cool thing is you can go to your. Uh, uh, so here's all the impression, like all the what, all the whole category is in. I don't know if you can actually do. Yeah, can you do that? No, I don't think so. That doesn't look right. That just shows you where it is on the main color wheel. But yeah, but like I was saying, if you go to like um, nature, this is a good one. Foliage. You can see the different color bars, the color wheel. So I could make it like a nature type thing there. So lots of cool thing in the uh, recolor artwork section. And yeah, there are some cool, there's, there's a couple of cool things in fonts as well that I was going to talk about. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more stuff to, like you can, you can show you activated the fonts here, for instance. And this is quite a cool thing as well. If you wanted to search through the fonts, it's a little bit difficult for me with this menu. Um, I think you're basically supposed to have a bigger screen than what I've got. Basically, depending on where I am on the screen, I'll be able to see different stuff. Um, but you can see the classification. So you can basically classify serif, slab serif, calligraphic, uh, decorative. And you can see various different uh, weightings, widths, uh, heights, contrast. So look at high, high contrast. There's none. There's not like that many like uh, that sort of fit these categories though. And it's probably because I've got too many selected. Let's just select, deselect everything. But yeah. All right, yeah. There's another cool thing as well to show is the uh, gradient. So for instance, say we've got here, we want to change the gradient. What we can do is we can go here, and this is obviously like uh, that is like a gradient. And you can click this button, Gradient Options. So with Gradient Options, you get these are called color stops. And depending on how near you get, you can see that will show you how near you get. And there's also this thing as well, this little thing at the top. And that you can also move. Uh, you don't want to click again, though. You can avoid it. Sometimes it can be... If you double click this, by the way, you can actually change the colors of that. So you can change the, the color there. Uh, you also get the option of edit, editing the gradient, uh, and now you'll see you'll see the gradient tool then became selected. Uh, let's have a look at changing the. Uh, okay. Actually, look quite good. It's actually quite. An, uh, I wasn't really planning on being like this, but the composition is actually not looking too bad, right? So, what we could do with the gradient tool anyway. Is it's kind of like a similar thing. Like you can pull this along there. So you could sort of change that up a bit if you wanted. You can also do this, which is you can see I can move the gradient to a slightly different location. I think you can you can also do like real movement. So we go down, down the gradient like that. Yeah, so if you want to actually change the gradient completely, right, there's also another way. You just draw a little line. So if I draw a little line, look what happens. I draw a little line like that. You can see I can actually draw the gradient down like that. Or I could draw it like this way. So yeah, lots of different ways to do this. Or I might want to just, for some reason, follow this hand thing, right? So yeah, lots of different ways to do it. And yeah, that's all for today. Thanks for watching.